Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and we are back with week three of the GBA. This week we are up against the Victorian Shadows, which is coached by Necro Stevo. And of course, you can check them out in the description linked below. So I wasn't able to get these done in the past couple of videos, but going forward, I'm going to do my best to include a team analysis before the battle video. So I'll spend maybe like five to ten minutes talking about how I built the team and what you can expect to see in this battle. So yeah, this is the first one. I hope you guys enjoy it. If you do, please let me know. Share support by leaving a like. Go check out our opponent and watch it from their perspectives as well. And uh, yeah, ultimately, like I said, I joined this league really to grow as a draft league player and as a singles player specifically. So uh, getting your guys' feedback on what I can do better is definitely highly appreciated so yeah anyway going into this week uh, Necro has had a really really impressive first two weeks he's 2-0 and he had a really dominant win with Scarf Xerneas last week so there are a couple of major threats on this team you can see it on the side below or uh, on the right side of the screen but uh, obviously he's got some really hard hitters in Xerneas, Landers, Hydreigon, and Mega Charizard uh, so I wanted to first prepare myself best for those now Xerneas actually isn't too much of an issue for my team to deal with specifically uh, because I do have Aegislash which is obviously an excellent counter to it I also thought that this would be the week to bring Toxapex finally because Toxapex really really walls Xerneas quite well and if you look at at Necro's team, it actually pretty much walls everything other than Landorus, and uh, I opted to go for a max HP special defense set to switch into Xerneas sets and into Hydreigon, because especially with the Z-move, like I wanted to potentially take like a Dragon or Dark Z-move, so I knew Toxapex was actually going to be really essential this week. Um, in the first two weeks, I ended up going with Zergatry over Toxapex, and pretty much the same thing for everything else, but this week I did feel like Zergatry was not very good, especially because it doesn't do very much damage to Mega Charizard X, so I uh, can't really touch uh, Landris if you don't have Hidden Power Ice, and a lot of the times like I'm going to be slower, because um, Landris, of course, could be Choice Scarfed as well, so I decided to keep that on the bench. Uh, otherwise, some relatively standard mons, but I did run some tech moves specifically to deal with certain things. So, uh, first of all, obviously Rayquaza. You'll notice that I actually opted for a Swords Dance Tailwind variant, and part of my logic with this set was I was thinking, okay, there might be situations where he might have Fortress, which I expected him to bring, or Tentacruel. If he has either of those, I might just be able to get a Tailwind up while they go for like a Switch Out, Swords Dance, and then Dragon Ascent just one-shots everything. So, that was kind of the pivot that I was trying to put myself in, but I figured even if I don't, like, if I'm not able to get both Tailwind and Swords Dance off, uh, what, those are both pretty strong options. I didn't really feel the need for something like Earthquake because Dragon Ascent has incredible coverage in this set specifically, so uh, opted to go with that just to really have a couple more options, and Tailwind would really allow some of my Pokemon, like Law Punny, for example, to really just sweep through, sweep through everything, so yeah. As for Mamoswine, I opted for a Life Orb variant with Rocks and Ice Shard. Um, this was pretty similar to the set that I brought last week, but I didn't want to run a Scarf variant because I figured that there's a decent chance he actually scarfs a bunch of his things to begin with. So even if I scarf my Mamoswine, I'm actually going to still be slower than what I thought he would scarf. And with max bulk, I can actually take most attacks, um, especially something like a Flare Blitz for Mega Charizard X, for example. So I just wanted something to really put on pressure, potentially give me the position to set up Rocks, and I really like Mamoswine swine so far so hasn't really disappointed thus far uh, for Lob Honey, I opted for a little bit less of a standard set. I opted for both Fire Punch and Ice Punch, so I gave up fa Fake Out and Quick Attack, which I've seen we've seen in previous weeks. Um, Ice Punch was obviously specifically to hit the Landorus, but being able to potentially one-shot it was a big deal. And I didn't really have great answers to Fortress, like nothing else on my attack team had a way to hit it for super effective. So I figured teching Fire Punch on Lob Honey would be a nice way to potentially just one-shot Fortress if he decides to bring it in. So just wanted to have answers against everything um i really didn't know which six he would bring exactly but i thought he would definitely bring xerneas landers hydreigon um and then uh, charizard and then i was thinking a combination of like tentacruel fortress um barbarico and rotomo but i mean all of his mods were pretty viable this week um you know alakazam even could make sense if you really really want to check the toxapex but yeah i was really expecting like the heavy hitters and then one to two walls um especially the tentacruel fortress and uh, barbarical which was actually something i was quite worried about uh, for the next one, I ended up going with Aegislash, which is a pretty standard set. I did for lefties instead of something like Life Orb because I thought the recovery would be quite nice against the bulkier mons like Tentacruel and Fortress, where you kind of get into like Stall Wars and I can get more consistent damage off while also healing. Standard set, just opted for HP Ice specifically to nuke Landorus should that come in. Obviously, as you can tell, I was quite worried about Landorus in this set. 
I uh, also had a Scarf Kartana just with enough speed investment to outspeed Timid Xerneas with Choice Scarf. I didn't think you'd bring Scarf Xerneas, but uh, it could still prove kind of annoying because if you can get rid of the Age Slash and the Toxapex, then Scarf Zern can really sweep through my team. So I wanted something to really just be able to get consistent damage off. I've gone with Choice Scarf Kartana all the weeks, but it's proven to be really good, so I figured why not? Uh, being able to outspeed your opponent's potential Scarf users is a really, really big deal. So standard set, opted for Defog as the last move because of course I knew Tentacruel and Fortress were both options on his team and really didn't want to deal with uh, rocks, especially with a Sash Rayquaza in the back. So I wanted to pivot myself into a position where I could a defog in the late game and then maybe sweep with Rayquaza. Otherwise, the attacks are pretty standard. And we've already kind of talked about Toxapex, but yeah, max HP and Spadef to deal with Xerneas and Hydreigon very specifically. I went with a pretty standard moveset, but I actually teched on Ice Beam specifically to deal with Landers as well. Um, with Ice Beam, you're actually not going to be able to one-shot Landers most of the time, but uh, it's enough to obviously do more than Scald, and it will get the knockout after a little bit of chip damage from something like Rocks or Extreme Speed from Rayquaza or any attack from Kartana. Pretty much any attack plus Ice Beam would guarantee the knockout, whereas Scald would do less damage, and so I was really, really afraid of Landers because, of course, as you can tell, the only thing that really can switch into it is Rayquaza, and Landers can obviously tech moves like Hidden Power Ice or just standard Rock-type attacks, which can really deal with Rayquaza, especially with the Z-move. The Z-move just allows it to one-shot four of my six mods, and so I was very, very scared about it. Even though I do have a lot of answers against Landers, and it kind of is tough to bring, I still figured he'd bring it, and that was the Pokemon I was actually most scared of, so yeah. That kind of goes into how I built the team for this week. Like I mentioned, it didn't really feel need for my other mods like Zergatry, Magmortar, Izelf. Like those are just a little bit more techy, and I felt like I could kind of overwhelm him with offense, especially because I do have some really, really heavy hitters. So I, I knew that like Xerneas would be annoying, but not as annoying as probably other teams uh, and how they face up against Xerneas because I do have two steel types and a Toxapex. So uh, I have a lot more resistances to it, which is really, really quite nice. And I figured the toughest thing about this matchup would be kind of breaking through some of the bulkier Pokemon, like Tentacruel, Fortress, even the uh, Mega Charizard X, for example, mainly because they can really just stick around for a long time and kind of just annoy me with attacks like Scald uh, from Tentacruel, for example. Um, so kind of my game plan going into this set was, okay, let me first get rid of these bulkier Pokemon like Tentacruel and Fortress, if possible, if those come out. Um, and then kind of go from there because I feel like I do have the speed advantage with things like Rayquaza, Kartana, and Lopunny. Uh, Toxapex can really soak attacks up and get Toxics off as well, so uh, Toxapex I figured would be a really, really key defensive pivot throughout the course of this game. I didn't fully prepare for all of my opponent's Pokemon though, like I didn't really have a great game plan against things like Rotomo and Barbarical, but I was like, okay, I mean, Aegis Slash is a great switch into almost anything, so I can deal with that. If I can eliminate the Hydreigon and the Landorus and the Charizard, which are obviously a, a number of threats, but if I can eliminate those, then Aegis Slash can really sweep through as well. And with Scar Cartana always, I kind of just want to put myself in a position where I chip away at everything and then uh, potentially be in a position to close out the game with Scarf Leaf Blades or Smart Strikes. So yeah, the goal of this game, as always with this team, is really to chip away at things and then kind of sweep through with one of the main sweepers, whether it be Rayquaza, Cartana, or La Punny. Uh, Aegis Slash did have a lot of sweep potential in this game as well, so wanted to try to pivot myself in for that. But ultimately, still a very scary team to deal with, and I figured I'd have enough techs and outs to deal with most of his things, especially from what I saw in the first two weeks, but as always with a draft leak, you don't know what surprises your opponents are going to bring. So I didn't have a definitive lead option, but I figured really anything between Aegis Slash, Mammal Swine, and Law Punny would be pretty good, and I would kind of play it by ear based off what I saw in team preview. Uh, very standard sets, I didn't really go for anything special other than just Cartana with a little bit of HP investment because I didn't need to outspeed anything past Scarf Xerneas. So yeah, that's gonna be it. Thanks for watching this part, guys. And of course, the battle will be right after this. So all right, let's actually get onto the battle now after the team builder. Hopefully, you guys did enjoy that aspect. I should be incorporating that in every week as long as I'm able to, and uh, should give you some more insight into how I approached the team building aspect. I, team building has been really, really fun for GBA. Um, I haven't really had too many crazy tricks up my sleeve so far, but I think I've drafted something that's relatively solid, so I've been able to go with more consistent options. But definitely happy with that. Anyway, I read your comments in last week's video, and I definitely will be doing live recordings here on out. Unfortunately, didn't do one for this week for the first couple of turns, or actually I did, but it glitched. Um, the audio glitched, and so I'm going to just commentate over the battle video for the first couple of turns up until the point where the audio is fine, and then you guys will have the live recording for the rest of it. So I figured that'd be the best compromise. I didn't want to waste the remainder of the live recording that I did manage to capture. But yeah. 
So going into team preview, Necro ended up bringing four of the six mons that I was like 100% sure he'd be bringing, which was Hydreigon, Xerneas, Charizard, and the Tentacruel. And then I figured he'd bring a combination of Rotom, Fortress, Landorus, and the Barbarical. I was pretty happy to see actually Rotom and the Fortress, mainly because those aren't as offensively strong options as Landorus or Barbarical. And Landorus was like the thing I was most afraid of because of how well it counters the Toxapex. So I was pretty happy to see that. Uh, but I also noted, I was like, oh man, like I didn't bring great answers against Fortress. Everything I have pretty much hits it for neutral, other than specifically Fire Punch on Lob Punny. So I figured that if I wanted a good shot of beating the Fortress and eliminating immediately, I needed to kind of bait it in and just knock it out with the Fire Punch and hope that he didn't expect it. So that was one of the things going on in the back of my mind. Uh, other things that I really noted was that he didn't have too many offensive members, but Rotom was something that could be annoying. Uh, I actually didn't prep very well for Rotom specifically, so I was kind of scared to see that in team preview. Um, because, like, yeah, I didn't know what kind of set he'd be running, and Electric hits most of my team for pretty darn hard. I mean, hits everything for neutral or super effective, and of course, the combination of Electric and Grass hits everything uh, on my team. So I was pretty scared to see that. Otherwise, nothing too crazy going on in team preview. I did not have a set lead option going into this. I was thinking, like, Lop Honey, Cartana, Aegislash, and Mammalswine would all be pretty viable. Um, once I saw this team, I was I led kind of towards Mammalswine just because had a good option against Tentacruel, uh, especially Tentacruel, which I know he led in the first week. So figured if you wanted to go for, like, the Toxic Spikes option or just kind of be annoying with Scald, I'd be able to pressure that out. If he went with Hydreigon, he's got to be worried about just heavy damage from Mammo. I didn't think he would learn, lead with Zern or the Fortress, but I knew I could pivot out into Aegislash. For that, if he led with Charizard, I could survive a Flare Blitz because I was thick fat with max HP and I can just knock it out with an Earthquake. So Rotom was pretty much like the one thing I was pretty afraid of. So, uh, but I figured no matter what, like one of the reasons I drafted Aegislash is because it's such a good switch in into so many different things as well as Toxapex. So I wasn't too worried about the lead here. I didn't think it would like make or break anything uh, per se, but yeah kind of what I thought of going into this game and so yeah like I mentioned I'm going to cover the first couple of turns through the battle video and then you guys will have the actual uh real time battle after like the first couple of turns so going forward I'm trying to make sure that this doesn't happen again but figured like I said this would be the best way to kind of make ends meet so hope you guys enjoy if you do please share your support by leaving a like definitely go check out Necro as well he was a really great opponent I had a ton of fun battling him and just a stand-up guy overall he was really really nice in you know planning the battle I was actually a little bit late to the game as well, we had some slight delays, so I thank you to him for being so accommodating, and let's get on with the game. So, obviously you'll know that he did end up bringing the Rotom as a lead, which was not what I wanted to see. And, you know, I was like, maybe he's Scarf Rotom, because if he's not Scarf Rotom, is he really going to stay in against the Mammal Swan, which could just Icicle Spear or Icicle Crash? He does end up staying in, so I was kind of surprised by that. He ends up going for a Will-O-Wisp instead of something like a Leaf Storm, so nice option there. Probably expecting the switch out, trying to just get some chip residual damage immediately, but Aegislash, easily my best switch in. This next turn, I figured Rotom really can't do anything other than Thunderbolt, so the switch was likely. I thought Hydreigon was coming in for sure, so I ended up going for the Flash Cannon. Instead, he just pivots out to Tentacruel, which I thought was a great option by him, a great switch, and one that's kind of annoying for me because I didn't really have a uh, very good damage against this Tentacruel. Uh, special Defense Drop there obviously would have been very, very nice. Unfortunately, we don't get it. Um, and the burn on Tage Slash is quite annoying as well, just because, like, it negates the lefty's recovery every turn, basically. Um, that's something that I really valued onto this Aegislash. Slash. So, going into this next turn, I really thought he might have wanted to set up a Toxic Spikes, like, King Shielding or switching out there is quite obvious, and so I figured that would be a free time to Toxic Spikes, so I ended up just going for a Shadow Ball. In retrospect, not really a great play. I thought about switching out into Mammal, but I didn't want to eat up a Scald, so fortunately at least I didn't do that, but Scald obviously still does a sizable amount of damage. Seeing like he's just going for Scald, I end up playing it safe this next turn and going for King Shield. Uh, worst case, he either Toxic Spikes or switches out into something like Hydreigon, but regardless, I want to see what he goes for. Uh, so to my delight, he actually stays in and ends up just going for Scald, so that's pretty much like the best case scenario. We end up not taking any damage, end up putting ourselves back into Shield form, and more importantly, we're kind of chipping away at the Tentacruel. Uh, at this point, you know, I'm thinking, like, Tentacruel is actually a really annoying Pokemon to deal with because it's quite bulky, and I want to kind of just chip away at it. I also didn't really have great switch-ins to Scald other than Toxapex, but, you know, Toxapex isn't going to do anything in return to this Tentacruel, so I actually figured my best option here was just staying in with Aegislash. At this point, I'm thinking, is it really good to trade, like, an S-tier pick for something like Tentacruel, which is, I think, like, B or C-tier? And in my head, I think the answer was yes, specifically in regards to this battle, just because Tentacruel is really, really bulky and just annoying to deal with overall, and I don't want any of my physical type attackers in the back, which is pretty much everything, uh, bar Toxapex, to get burned. So I wasn't willing to switch in um, 
anything, and I was content with, to just play this King Shield game. Uh, fortunately, once again, he just does go for Scald into the King Shield, so uh, we end up not losing anything on those two turns, which were relatively predictable. And I was quite worried about Tentacruel having a potential Pinch Berry, uh, one of those 50% berries. It looks like it was just in range, potentially, for once. I wasn't sure if he actually was carrying it or not, but we didn't see a Black Sludge, so I was really curious on the item. Uh, regardless, he goes for another Scald, doesn't quite knock me out, and I know that another Shadow Ball here should be able to take him out. So, uh, we just go for it and end up getting the knockout, as you'll see here. So... Um, obviously at this point in the game, I'm thinking like, you know, has all of this been worth it? Like, I just lost, took so much damage on Aegislash, like I'm literally treating damage with a Tentacruel. And Aegislash is such a good defensive option and offensive option against the Hydra, or sorry, not the Hydreigon, uh, the Xerneas specifically. Hydreigon ends up coming in here and... I was heavily con contemplating a switch into maybe a Lopunny or the Toxapex, but I really didn't want to risk uh, taking like all that damage, so I ended up just getting the knockout here uh, and eating it up. Uh, uh okay. Aegislash just got knocked out. Um, he used Dark Pulse. Thinking of switching in Mammo. I kind of like that, I think. And it gives me the abilities to get up rocks. And I could also go into Love Honey. Well, let's go into Love Honey, actually. <clears throat> okay, so let's see, Tentacruel's gone. Fuck Dark Pulse from Hydra gone. I'd be worried about a low kick. Return seems relatively safe. Uh, he's got Zern, Rotom, Mega Charizard, or Fortress in the back. And a Fortress which is yeah, I mean, return two shots everything. I'll go for return. Ah, oh, he's staying in, okay. If he's scarf then. Nope, he's not. Interesting. Yeah, it's gonna DM. Okay. I'm not sure that was worth it because this should knock me out. Oh, I survive. What? Okay, I really did not expect that. I also expected him to stay in, honestly. Uh, or sorry, switch out. But I guess he didn't really have any safe switch heads. It's kind of frustrating, but it's okay. Um, definitely gonna return here. Chunking Hydreigon to that low is good though. Hydreigon is one of the more annoying Pokemon uh, to deal with. Yeah, I, I'm not sure I like how I played with Aegislash early game, because it's obviously my best answer against the Xerneas, but I think Toxapex and Kartana should be enough to deal with Xerneas anyway, and Tentacruel is actually one of the more annoying members to deal with, because it can Scald everything. So, I didn't feel too bad about trading it. Um, this last is obviously is kind of frustrating, because uh, low kick would knock out Hydreigon, but um, he's actually going to switch out, which I actually don't mind. Ideally, Fortress comes in because I do have Fire Punch, and it is Fortress. So I'm wondering if I can cheese him with the Fire Punch here. That would be excellent. I'm going to just go for it. Yeah, I tech Fire Punch in specifically for Fortress. Um, I didn't think I'd see Fortress and Tentacruel. But once I clear those out of the way, he's basically out of his uh, really offensive mods. Okay, so we know Hydreigon isn't Scarf. So it's probably Z. Echo Meteor did around 90%, so it's probably a low roll, honestly. Uh, well, he has a 25% chance to KO if he's modest max. And he stays in. Is it Akaberry? Oh, nice. That's so good. Wow, okay. So the tech really coming through there. Fortress just falls instantly. Yeah, I was supposed to have maxed, uh, uh, I was supposed to have Fire Punch, Lob Punny in last week. It ended up, ended up bringing it. So we're down to his offensive mods at this point, and that's good. Rotom now is my main concern. I'm still really wondering what the Rotom is carrying. 
because it opted not to, it opted to stay in on my Mammal Swine when we uh, both led with it, which I wasn't expecting. Um, question is whether I want to conserve Lop Honey or not. I could go into like my Toxapex. I could see Charizard also going for a Dragon Dance, but I'm willing to maybe just go for a return. Hmm. I'm gonna check Charizard's moveset. I know it gets like Thunder Punch, so that could be a way to hit the Toxapex. I just don't want it to get a free Dragon Dance off, basically. Yeah, it gets Earthquake too. Um. I think I'm content with what Lop Honey has done this game because I can clean out the Hydreigon with an Ice Shard or an Extreme Speed. So yeah, let's just go for a return. I'm gonna turn the light on too, it's getting dark. Yeah, like the switch I'm most inclined to make is switching Lop Honey out into Toxapex, but I don't want Charizard to just Mega Evolve and get a free Dragon Dance off. Um, and if I get any chip damage onto this Charizard, then it should be in KO range from Rayquaza's Dragon Ascent. For example, even if it Dragon Dances... Uh, well, I'm curious on what set it has. We'll see. Uh, either way, Return should do a hefty amount here, around like 40-ish, I'm assuming. 40-50? Oh, even more, actually. And he just goes straight for Flare Blitz, which is actually really good to see, too. Nice. Okay, so Mega Charizard now around 40%. I'd say 35 actually. Confirmed Fair Blitz. Hydreigon is in Scarfed and is around 30%. Rotom and Xerneas at full. <coughs> Excuse me. Um. Okay. Tempted to just bring out Rayquaza. But I think I want to. Ideally, I want to close out the game with Rayquaza. So I'm running this kind of cool set with Tailwind. Mm, if you, I mean, it's probably max speed though. Let's see if Cartana Sacred Sword can get the knockout. Cartana, see Charizard. Because if it doesn't, that's pretty scary. I am also running out of time. Let's see Sacred Sword. I think it should get the knockout. Depends on how much bulk he has. Uh, 39 to 47. Let's see how much Mega Love Honey Return should do. Yeah, given how much that Return did, I don't think he's invested, so I'm gonna go into Cart. I could also bluff with Mammo. Mm, that's actually kind of tempting. Because I don't think his Flare Blitz should knock me out. Because I'm pretty bulky. Yeah, it shouldn't. I'm actually going to go to Mammal. Yeah. Uh, this is a good opportunity for me to get my rocks up. Do I even want a rocks? Like, I could just attack here. Like, Icicle Crush would do a lot to anything. Because I don't think he'll be switching too much at this point. Mm, but the rocks does mean like Cartana should be able to one-shot the Xerneas. I think. Depends on how, how much he's invested in, but I am max attack with Scarf. I think I like Roxing here. I should survive a Flare Blitz for sure with Thick Fat. Just let me double check to make sure it is Thick Fat. Yeah. I really want a rocks here. But, I mean, he could, he probably just Flare Blitzes, but he'll faint from the Flare Blitz. So I'm gonna go for it, yeah. I expect him to stay in here. Uh, I think ideally a switch out into Rotom is the best case scenario. But, I mean, he could also, like, Willow Whisper Dragon Dance. But, I guess he could Roost as well. Um, but that seems highly risky. Like, you have to be scared of Scarf Mammo. He's just gonna Flare Blitz, okay. So I should survive this and get my rocks up. Okay, nice. Ah, uh, the burn's actually pretty unfortunate, but oh well. Okay. 
So he was willing to just sack the Charizard there. Uh, that does mean I get rocks up. It's 4-3 in my favor. I'm hoping to just close out this game with Cartana, but we know Rotom is going to be kind of an issue. I'm going to need Rayquaza to deal with that. I guess I didn't play around Rotom very well, actually, now that I think about it. Um, should have maybe conserved Mammo better for it. Like, it kind of comes down to Rayquaza beating it. Although, I think Rayquaza can just SD and Dragon, Dragon Ascent to beat that. I was really expecting to play with Toxapex more this game. Um, I also wonder, like, it, I would guess the Rotom seems pretty bulky. Let's see. Charizard's down. Yeah, we saw will from Rotom. I just like... The fact that it stayed in really makes me question what set it is uh, against the Mammal, because Mammal obviously, like, Scarf Mammal is one of the things you have to watch out for, so if I were Scarf, you have to worry about, like, an Icicle Crash or an Icicle Spear. Uh, looks like Zern's finally coming out here, okay? Uh, seems like a pretty safe opportunity to just switch into Pex. I'm just gonna double check Xerneas' moveset. I mean, it does get access to Sh Psy Shock, which I guess is the thing I'm most worried about. Yeah, I don't want to just switch it on a Psy Shock for free, so I think I'm just going to sack Mammal here. And then I can bring in uh, Cartana. I wish, uh, yeah, I, I wish I had something on Cortana to better deal with the Rotom, though. Like, Rotom is just the main concern right now. Uh, we'll see what Zern goes for. Calm mind. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. Interesting. And lefties, wow. Uh, well, that's interesting, but uh, lefties that has what like fifteen percent. Yeah, I don't know if a smart strike will knock it out. It's my concern. I think I should whittle at it a little bit more. So I'm gonna bring out Pex here instead of the Cartana. I'm trying to close out this game with Rayquaza. Question is whether I just Scald or Toxic here. Scald really isn't going to do anything unless I get the burn. I think Toxic is better. Toxic Pex. Okay, he has Thunderbolt. No Psy Shock, so I'd rather see Thunderbolt. Okay, nice. Survive the Thunderbolt. We'll heal back from Black Sludge. Nah, it's gonna be close as to how much I take. 70, 157 to 75. So that one did 15. 82 damage. So if he gets the same roll, I'll survive. Let's see, Xerneas, it's that plus one special attack. Thunderbolt. Obviously, I want to click recover. Eighty-eight to one hundred four. How much damage did that last one do? Yeah, it doesn't look like he's max special attack. Twenty-five, seventy. That last one did eighty-two. Hmm. Because alternatively, I can switch into Cartana here. But I don't think it's worth it. Yeah, if I survive this and get the recover off, I think. I feel like we're in a really good spot. I'm going to go for the recover. Okay, can we survive? That last one did 82. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. 
So that was, that did 74. Yeah, and I think we can just keep clicking recover now. He's gonna have to switch in the Rotom at some point at this rate. Uh, the question is, do I want to predict Rotom coming in this turn and go for a Toxic? Uh, I think it's better just to recover this turn. Yeah, there's the switch out. Should be Rotom. Oh, it's gonna be Hydreigon, actually. No, that makes sense, actually, yeah. Hmm. It's most likely gonna be Z Hydreigon here, so it could be like Z Dark Pulse. See if Z Dark Pulse knocks me out. I'm worried about or Z Dragon, obviously. It shouldn't. Though. I max everything, HP and special defense. Yeah, none of these have a chance of knocking me out. So I think it might just be worth it to just knock out the Hydreigon with an Ice Beam, because then Rayquaza and Kartana I think can clean this game up. Yeah, I'm just gonna Ice Beam here. I don't know if it was worth it to have brought out Mammal in this position I was at earlier. Maybe just bringing in Kartana was better, because I think it, the Charizard was in Sacred Sword KO range. So I don't know if I like that play. Call my lefties. Zern is really interesting, though. Ah, you just taunt. Okay. Well, I'll take that. I get a free knockout, and I can just switch out this next turn. Yeah, I teched an Ice Beam for Landris. Landris and Hydreigon were the two things I was worried about most, because I knew I had Aegislash. Uh, so that's a good turn. You have to bring out- oh, he doesn't bring out the Rotom. Does Rotom not have Thunderbolt, or is he- like, what's- what's- what's happening here? <laughs> I'm gonna guess the Zern has HP Fire, too, so I don't want to just switch in Cartano willy-nilly. Like, I kind of just play the Stall War with Toxapex and wait to get Cartana in. Yeah, so I'm just gonna Scald this turn. Yeah, and recover next turn. He probably just keeps clicking Claw Mine at this point. Um, I mean, that was a turn to switch into Kartana, if any. But I know I'm Scarf Tana, and I think Rayquaza should be able to beat the Rotom. Question is, like, do you go for another Claw Mine here? Because you know I want to click Recover. Because I don't want to throw the game by switching in Kartana on a Hidden Power Fire. Oh, wait, I'm taunted. I can't recover. I forgot about that. Um, so do you call mind again, then? Mm, man, if I switched out, that would have been better. Like, I feel okay about my position, but the Rotom could still really beat me. It really comes down to how much investment this Zern has. Given that he switched in, I mean, I, I don't. I think that means the Rotom's gonna be bulky. I think I'm just gonna scald and then recover. He actually doesn't go for a second call mine. Interesting. Ooh, paralysis. Okay, 157 down to 71. So that what that time it did more. I wonder if this is like a rest set. I think I'm fine sacking Tox effects here. Um, once again, it comes down to a Thunderbolt roll. I feel like if I survive this, then the game should be over in my favor. But yeah, I, once again, I don't want to switch into cart and either get paralyzed or eat up something else. So I'd rather just sack Tox effects. Tox effects has done its job at this point. All right, if we survive this, we win, I think. Uh, but we don't survive. Okay, that's fine. Maybe I should have switched out and been, been more willing to switch out into Cartana. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Now I go out into Cart, right? Kind of regret not switching out now, actually. Because I knew that was most likely knocking out.
He's gonna switch Zern out into Rotom. So, huh. I, I feel like I should have switched out last turn, especially because my cart has a little bit of bulk too. Do we think Zern's not going to be max speed then? I feel like it still should be to outspeed Rayquaza. I'm going to go out into cart. I wish I was Z-Car right now with Breakneck Blitz. <coughs> so I feel like Zern should switch out here, so I'm thinking of switching out into Rayquaza, Swords Dancing, and then Dragon Ascenting. I just can't see Xerneas staying in here. If I call this wrong, though, I think I most likely lose. But. He has to switch out, I think. Alright, what if I don't call it? Then. He can just click Will O Wisp. Hmm. But. How much does Kartal have? A Sacred Sword. Leaf Blade, but it's 21 to 25%. So I could get two Leaf Blades off effectively. And then I think Zern might faint from... I think maybe actually I just stay in with Zer uh, Kartana. Actually, yeah. I don't want to risk just switching in into a Moonblast. Like, I've been playing super safe this game, but I feel like I can. I'm gonna leave played. Yeah, he does switch out. Okay. But the re my logic here is that Leaf Blade's doing around 20 to 25%. So two Leaf Blades will put it in Dragon Ascent KO range. And then I can just Dragon Ascent Extreme Speed to win the game. It actually did even more than I thought. Was that a crit? No. And it's lefties too, which is good. So we don't have to worry about a scarf or anything. Yeah, I think Rayquaza should be able to close out this one now. I'm just going to keep clicking Leaf Blade. Hidden Power. Fire? Yeah. Okay, barring anything crazy, I think we've got this. Double check. I there I could have taken a lot more risks this game. Um But I didn't feel the need to. I mean Rotom's not outspeeding me. I think it's best to just dragon ascend because I'm focus ash too, so I can beat the Zern regardless. So I think we got this. Well, let's see. Yeah, I mean there's so many risks that I could have taken. I could have switched Toxic Box out into Cartana, which could have been better. I gave up Aegis Slash really early, but I think I'm okay with that. Uh, the fire punch on Law Punny was like a really, really big tech that allowed me to beat the... Yeah, he's going to give up. Okay, yeah. So no protect or anything crazy like that, but Dragon Ascent should get this knockout cleanly. Okay, good. Um, yeah, I didn't think Xerneas was that big of a threat to my team because I had two steals and a Toxapex. Um, so, I don't know. I don't know how much I exactly liked the early game that I played, but... I wanted to get rid of the Tentacruel and the Fortress because I didn't want like Toxic Spikes and Spikes and Stealth Rock and all those shenanigans going off. Um, is there any way I could lose this now? What if it's Rest Xerneas? I think I just go for E Speed. I mean, E Speed should knock out. <laughs> Let me just check, even if it's Max Hulk. Uh. I mean, he's at, like, what, 10%? Yeah, I should definitely knock out, I think. Unless he's, like, 252, 250. Yeah, that's, like, it's a knockout. Yeah, so we just click extreme speed. I was wondering, yeah, he, I mean, if he has, like, rest, sleep talk, but that doesn't make any sense with Calm Mind. Yeah, we get the knockout. Nice. Wow, so we end up getting the win. Uh, really, really good game to Necro there. Uh, that was, his team was really scary to prep for. Um... 
especially because yeah i've been watching some of his previous games and his win last week was like really really impressive he had some really cool prep um especially with charizard but a couple of things really helped me out here i think uh the rocks was definitely very helpful uh just for getting that chip damage the tox effects was huge i finally managed to bring it and uh you know, I drafted it because it's a really good wall and my team is rather offensive and it ended up fitting into my team pretty much perfectly. Um, especially because like, you know, it kind of basically stalls the way out for all the more offensive moms. Uh, Lopunny came up huge. I mean, be able to do so much damage to Hydreigon, which I was really worried about the Scarf. Uh, and of course, being able to just one-shot the Fortress with Fire Punch. That was probably the biggest thing because I saw Fortress and I was like, wow, like, I don't have a really great way to hit this outside of Fire Punch from Lopunny. Uh, so him giving it up like that was really really big and I felt pretty good after we got rid of the two main walls uh, Which is why I was willing to give up Aegis Slash for that tentacle um, So I, I was running like a Tailwind Swords Dance Rayquaza set. Uh, I didn't end up really needing either, but that's okay uh, Yeah, I could have switched out Mammal Swine. I could have brought in Cartana in the turn I brought in Mammal Swine, but didn't really feel too much need for that and um, <clears throat> Towards the end there yeah, I f like not knowing the Rotom thing set was probably the scariest thing and seeing that he wasn't max speed either or like I was worried about Scarf the entire time. Um, it was interesting for him to have brought out the Xerneas instead of the Rotom, but that probably made a lot of sense because he knew that I was going to be really, really bulky, figured like Thunderbolt's not even going to two-shot me so I could just Toxic and recover all the way. So Toxic Effect's really coming through here, making sure that the Xerneas didn't just sweep through my team. Um, and ultimately, yeah, no, like, berry from the Rotom, which I was scared of as well. I was worried about, like, a 50% berry, because, like, two Leaf Blades would activate the berry, or sorry, Citrus Berry, and then maybe Dragon Ascent doesn't knock out, but in the end, we do end up getting the win. So, great game to Necro there. Uh, he's had some really impressive wins once again. He was, he's been really kind and just a really great guy, so pleasure playing him. Uh, we actually moved to 3-0, and so we've got more wins than last season already, which is nice, but don't want to stop here. I want to keep the momentum going, and uh, hopefully we'll keep getting some wins. So let me know what you guys thought about the prep and everything this week. Um, definitely would be open to any feedback, as always. I don't think I played incredibly well, but overall, my team had some advantages, and so I was able to use those. I didn't really need to make any obscene predictions, really like the last two weeks as well. So if anything, I guess I'm pretty happy about what we ended up drafting. Uh, we definitely take those. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and we will see you with week four next week. All right, peace.